Archie Luxury Channel, just coming to meet my good friend, Raphael. This is my good friend. He's the guy who took me to the Tanglin Club. And um, let's have a look. Raphael! Hello, Archie. How are you? Good to see Great you. To see All you right, again. yes. Man, so, how delighted like of you. Hey, this is uh, amazing fantastic. Yeah. This is an amazing place to come here. So, this International is celebrity, entrepreneur, businessman and management consultant. management consultant and renowned wristwatch collector check wow. out the view how's the view look at this this is the hong kong island this side the... opposite you see the uh, convention and exhibition center which yes turtle shaped building yes it's amazing H hsbc building over there hsbc yeah merrill lynch i can see no it's the uh, bank of america tower Yes, look at that. Absolutely amazing city, isn't it? Hong Kong. Do you like this better than Singapore? I love both cities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just like watches, you know, I like quite a few. Ah, <laughs> that's right. So if Hong Kong was a watch, what brand would this be? This is probably a, a Piaget? Rolex. A Rolex. Piaget? <laughs> no? Piaget is a bit niche. A bit niche? Just specialised in extra thin and uh, diamond watches. Yes. This is uh, Mitch, Rolex. Mitch this is Rolex. Rolex. What would Singapore yeah. be? Paddock? Singapore may be a, a smaller city, so um, yeah, smaller, smaller brand. Omega, maybe. Omega, okay. And, and where is Patek Philippe? What country is that? Well, obviously, uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. <laughs> yes, good, good call. Archie Luxury Channel, we're interviewing famous people. Raphael Young, you're an author, you're an entrepreneur, world management class consultant as well. Management consultant, world class, world class collector, and uh, very cool guy. You're the guy who took me to the Tangling Club. Yes, in Singapore. Very, very cool. Oldest club in Singapore, 150 years. Now, I've decided to interview you for the channel, so so we want to just ask you a few questions. All right. Now your collection, you said to me you got about fifty pieces. Somewhere along that line. And you're you're mentioning a connection. You've got to have a connection. You've got of a course. connection with the pieces. And you you told me the story. You're wearing your your AP. You just held it up a bit for the for the yep. AP there, Royal and you told me the story you went, platinum. where did you go? Well, I, recently I was in um, Bali, Bali, and uh, my friends organized this tracking trip um, yes. up one of the uh, volcanoes, Yes. Mount Batur, Yes. and uh, I, I took along this watch with me, and yes. uh, we uh, basically started at um, midnight, going to the base camp, Yes. when we arrived it's about 2 a.m., Yes. And then we, we started the ascent. Wow. With, with a guide. Yes. So uh, by the time we were up at the summit, it was yes. about 5 a.m. Wow. It's just enough time to catch the sunrise, oh. which is absolutely fantastic. And um, it was not a piece of cake, it was actually quite challenging. You know, it's a, yes. you know you're tracking vertically yes. in, at night. Yes. And, uh, but then, of course, at the end of the, the hike and uh, you know you see a beautiful view of the the volcano which is still an active one wow and uh, and then we had the volcano eggs for breakfast it's uh, quite an experience so tell me this it's all about experiences of course of course you, do you have many watches that have experiences um 
your your yellow gold sub, you met me. That's an experience. Yes, that's you can't right. ever sell that because you met me. First yes. time you met and me. And you, you had one there too. I had one too. An older yes. version, yeah. Yes, that's right. Mine I had, had the super case. You had the you had ceramic. the ceramic version, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But we were part of the same club because we both had the gold subs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean that one also have a story. I mean each each watch have a story. That one I, yes. I bought at um, at Harrods in the UK. Wow! And uh, I bought quite a few uh, uh -huh. Rolexes from Harrods. Uh, they have very good service. Mm -hmm. And um, after that purchase, they they uh, they asked me, uh, uh, Mr. Young, we actually have a Rolex event coming up in uh, in London, and I asked, uh, uh, what is it? They say, oh, it's an opera, sir. Yes. I said, oh, you know, since I was yes, uh, based yes. in Singapore at yes. that time, yes. I thought that's awfully long way from Singapore to London to watch an opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, uh, and then I asked, who was playing? Mm -hmm. oh, it's a uh, Placido Domingo, which was, you know, probably the best you can get. Yes. And then I thought about it and I said, okay, then I'll come along for that. Yes. So uh, Rolex organized a superb evening. Yes. They, uh, they sent a Rolls Royce to uh, pick, pick me up. It's a Rav. Ah, a Rav. A Rav. A Rav. Or Rav. Rav or Rav. Yeah, yeah. So, Expensive. Uh, in white. So wow. it's pretty cool. And then when we arrive at um, Covent Garden. Yes. And it's a whole fleet of Rolls Royces, you know. <laughs> it's oh. not just me. It's a whole, all, all the rest of the VIPs. Oh, I see. It's quite an experience. And... Uh, uh, you know, I met the head of watches of Harrods, head of retail, the managing director of Rolex, and of course wow. the CEO of Rolex, um, wow. Sean Patrick Dufour. Yes. And then uh, we had the best seats in the house in yes. um, Royal Opera House. Yes. Followed by dinner with the cast. Wow. Which was superb. And then yes. you know we yes. met uh, Domingo himself. Yes. Who's been a Rolex ambassador. Yes. For God knows how many years. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, it's just a superb evening, down to the very fine detail. And and now you've met Archie Luxury, so so you've done it all in the watch <laughs> game, haven't you? Of course, hey? yeah. Hey? With a lovely session of afternoon tea. You just afternoon talk about that's, that's watches. It. Exactly. So so for you, uh, to tell me this, you were saying that it's very important that a watch has a story. You know, like it yeah. has good memories. I, 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 I agree with you. I, I really do agree with you. I think it's so important that it's not just anything you could buy from a shop it's it's that your watch gets little scratches or does this or does that and um you know it's 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 the it's it's kind of over time it develops your story well it's your emotional attachment through the story through your experience with the particular timepiece I recently read a book um, which is A Man and His Watch. Yes, I, got, I've, I, oh, just, got it. I just got it from Amazon. Very nice, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, uh, you know, they have Sylvester Saloon and... Yes, some they had, the, the thing I couldn't understand is they had Ben Simer from Houdinki in there. Yeah. They didn't fucking ask me! Yeah, you should have been there! Yeah. <laughs> That's what pisses me off. Why didn't they But I, I noticed that um, um, Omega, uh, Speedmaster, the, the one that his grandfather gave to him... Yes. That's Ben Simer from Wolinky. Yes. That picture on, on that, in the book, is different than the one that he had, the video on Houdinki about his oh, collection. Oh, I see. So I was wondering, hmm, what, which, which Speedmaster was it? Because yes. the one in the book has a multicolour sub-dial, mm. which was quite rare. Yeah. And uh, it, it's an interesting thing, you mentioned Houdinki. Houdinki, Houdinki said two watches, if he had to just make his collection two watches, the watches that mean the most most to him. He had a, a Patek 3940 perpetual calendar, uh, and the other watch was a Lange 15 chronograph. Is that the uh, Lange 1815 chronograph. All oh, right, all right. He said those two watches, he just, that's the two. What, what, what watches, you've, you've got a fairly big collection. Hmm. What what sort of watches mean them? What are your key essential watches you'd never sell? Your well, actually, I've, I hardly sell any of my watches, <laughs> so I've just been oh, okay. accumulating. But what watches mean the most to you? It's, it's hard to say. It depends on um, your mood, 
Yes, because yeah. you, you've got an AP fifteen two hundred two. That's the the um, the, that's the, the modern... uh, anniversary fortieth uh, edition of the uh, Royal Oak. Yes, you love that, don't you? I do. You you've also got thirty nine a... millimeters. I mean, yes. I'm quite a big block, but it seems a bit just a slightly tink small. Yes. But it's um, it become a much more classier watch than a sports luxury watch. Yes. So, you know, I wouldn't go to do engaging sporting activities with it. No. no. Uh, I, I treat it more special occasions to wear it. And you've got a 5711 Nautilus, Patek Nautilus. Yes, yes. That's a beautiful watch. Beautiful watch. I like, I like the bracelet and the, uh, the simple dial. Yes. Which is um, a bit more bluish grey. Yes. Um, and now it's gone through the roof, uh, the Nautilus. Yes. It's very difficult to get. It is. In Massive condition. premium. Yes. Massive premium. I also like the um, 5712. Yes, that's that's the uh, more comp... So that was the... Um, With the moon phase. It used the 240 oh. movement. Power reserve. Yeah. And uh, the, the micro rotor. Yes. I'm still trying to get hold of one, uh, which is difficult now. Would you get it in steel or white gold? Steel. Steel, definitely yeah, steel. definitely steel. Mm. So recently I had an um, authorised dealer um, yes. said, oh, Mr. Young, uh, congratulations, I've got the 5712 for you. I see. I was ecstatic. I got the um, WhatsApp uh -huh. and uh, I was out travelling off the country at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, please reserve for me. Uh -huh. And then they said, uh, that should be fine, but uh, it's going to be a bundle deal. You have to buy another one. Uh -huh. I said, okay, I mean, I don't mind buying a, a nice world time, you know, maybe a chronograph. Sure. But when they show me the selection, it's rather limited, you know, a lot oh. of the color Trava, um, and all the, all the other models are more expensive than the Nautilus. So uh, oh, it see. was a bundle deal, you've got to get another one, and it's just, uh, I, I don't want to get another one that I don't like. Yes. So uh, in the end, I, I have to give, give it up. But now with the benefit of hindsight, I thought, oh, now the Nautilus has gone up so much, man. so difficult to get. Maybe I should just get another one anyway. Yes. For the sake of having yes. that brand new 5712. You mentioned something to me. I said to you, what was your first watch? And you told me a date just. Yes. When you turned 18. Two tone, yeah. What color dial? It was a champagne gold. Champagne. And, and you said, I said to you, do you, do you love it? Do you like it? And you said, no. Yeah, what that, was wrong? What went wrong? Why didn't you love it? I just thought it was too matured for me. With that, um, you know. Who gave that to you? My father. Isn't that a special gift? My yes. father never gave me fucking anything. <laughs> a Rolex? Yeah, you but got a beautiful uh, new Rolex. Well, he could have given me a chronograph or something. You know, much more sporting. You know, and Same price. Lucky you could have got a Submariner. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I never really liked my first watch. You still have it? No. What? I don't have it anymore. You sold it? Yeah. You said you don't sell your stuff. But that one, I'd never liked it. I, I just, I, so I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I just... So what did you do with it? You sold it? Yeah. Traded it? Traded it in. And what did you get for yourself? Daytona. Steel? Two-tone. Two-tone. Because oh, I wanted to get a steel, but it's so difficult. Yes. But once I, you know, I once bought the two-tone. Yes. Then I have some record with the authorized dealer. Yes. Then they offer me the steel. And you got a steel as well. Then I got a steel. What color dial on the steel? Uh, white. Oh, I love the white. That's yeah, a beautiful nice. watch. And then. Yes. I got the uh, yellow gold. Yes. Paul Newman dial. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it's a uh, sort of a coffee. Is is that with the gold bracelet or, or with the... the gold? Yeah. Oh, you got Daytona one of those. gold. Yeah, that, yellow gold. That's a great model, that. Yeah. Beautiful. And then I got a platinum. I oh, got the platinum one. When it first came out, with the I ceramic. See. Yes. So I almost got all, all the different metals now. Yes. Of Daytona's. Yes. Starting off with a two-tone. <laughs> Starting off. Well, I I don't think there's anything wrong with. I think the two-tone Daytona. Hmm. If if you were to have one watch, for life. I think a two-tone Daytona, it could be business, it could be casual, it mm. could be anything you need to do. You could go to, you could visit the Queen with it on, 
you could go to court with yes. criminal charges pending. You <laughs> could you could do anything with with a two tone Daytona, can't you? Yeah, you can. But I just thought either steel or yellow gold or even rose gold, yes. like platinum, are better. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. I mean, if, if you just had normal person just had one watch, a two-tone Daytona is very beautiful. That's a quality watch. Yes, it is. It is. I, I, I actually had the Zenith movement, so it's a bit better. Oh, it's, it's, it's nice. Better. Yeah. I think that that is actually, I've got to be honest with you, I think those Zenith two-tones are an absolute bargain. Yeah, they, they, they haven't gone up a lot, they the prices. Will, they will. It, 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 the, the Zenith steels are through the roof. Yeah. The two tone has to follow. I cannot believe. I always think the two tone mm. is a bit of a sleeper. Yes. But um, I I I I actually love the two tone, and um, it's quality. It's very. I got to be honest with you. When I had the yellow gold sub, I found I couldn't wear it every day because it's a little bit delicate. Yeah, it needs the occasion and how yeah. you feel. Well, I was yeah. meeting you. I wore it oh, to right. meet yeah, you. Yeah, that's now, right. but you're, you're an important person. So, but I mean, with the two-tone, you've got the strength of steel and the gold is just kind of finishing. You, you, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. kind of, it's kind of, the two-tone Daytona is the equivalent of a Range Rover. You can turn up at a fancy restaurant, but it can go off-road as well. Yeah. But then again, it sort of represents um, you're sitting on a fence, you know, you can't quite go for the yellow gold or you can't quite go for the steel, so you sit somewhere in between, which is not optimized. But I, I got to tell you, you know, the, one of the most beautiful watches in the world is the 5980 Patek Nautilus, you know, the two-tone Nautilus? Yes. They do that with the blue dial. The chronograph is the chronograph Nautilus two-tone. That's steel and rose gold. I thought that is just killer i think that looks better than a solid gold it just pops you know the one i'm talking about yeah that they're, they're, they're not that common though no but they're sexy yeah. they're gorgeous rose gold and steel with the blue dial it just it's for somebody who's confident they don't need in the 70s i'm not sure about no they today. only just released it now but because they never had a Nautilus chronograph. Oh, that's true, right, yes. You know, that was, that's a new thing, it's just... But did it, yeah, I don't know, the two tone is, is, um, is... Oh, we've got some it's reservations. It's not quite up to date, is it? I mean, you know. I, I, I love the two tone. I, I really, um, I had a friend of mine who just collected two tones. Really? Yes, yes, he had a two tone bluesy sub. Uh -huh. Two-tone GMT with the black dial. These were pre-ceramics. And he got a two-tone Daytona with the white dial. So we had a blue dial, a black dial, and a white <coughs> dial. And he was going to get a champagne date just to have a four-piece combo, except he got divorced and he lost the lot. But that's another story. Oh, you mean he lost it to the... Um... Well, he had to pay lawyer's bills. Oh, right. You know? But I'm just saying, it was, it was still a good... It was, he had three two-tones. Ah, okay. Very cool. You know what's really, what's, what's cooler? It's what's just that? to have, get it in every metal so that you can have every uh, occasion. Every know? occasion yeah. covered. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Even with the leather uh, bracelet. Yes. So tell me or, this. Or, or crocodile uh, bracelet. What, what watch means the most to or you? Or rubber. What watch means the most? You've got 50 plus watches. Mm. You're a very 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 sophisticated collector what watch sure that. is your what watch means the most i didn't say most expensive i said what watch means the most to you it sort of changes from time to time yes you know, it's, uh, it's um, i mean if you ask me right at this moment yes because of my recent summit to <coughs> mount Batur, so probably yes. this um ap Royal offshore platinum I and see. Um, I, I actually changed the uh, leather band to the um, rubber band, which yes. is the uh, indigo camouflage. Yes. Uh, from Horace, a, a very yes. niche shop from yes. Miami, and it sort of matches my yes. camouflage shirt yeah. as well. Yes. And uh, I've been wearing it a lot because you know, that was the recent experience. 
Yes. I'm sure time goes by. Yes. You change, right? Yes. So maybe a particular moment at work or a particular moment in life, which you have become more emotionally attached to a certain other piece. So at the moment, the AP is striking it big with you. Right at this time, yeah. But the the problem with having too many watches, I think, mm -hmm. I think that's the thing with uh, many collectors as well. It's not yes. enough risk time to bond with the particular timepiece. Yes. So, yes. Um, you know, the more you wear your watch, the What's more affinity you, you tend to have it. And therefore, yes. of course, the more experience you have along with the timepiece. Yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, some, some of the ones that I haven't been wearing, then yes. you sort of, um, you're having a looser relationship. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to stop this video now. And then we're right. going to start again. I've got some more questions for you. Some more? I think we've got enough. <laughs> no, well, just, just, just a few more. A few more questions. So we just stop now. All Thank right. you so much, Super Collector. And um, I'll also put some links to the, uh, the magazines you've appeared in. All right, cool. And uh, we'll put your Instagram link too. Uh, I'll keep it private. It's, oh, okay. it's, it's also um, uh, under security lock as well. Oh, then I'll, I'll okay. yeah. yeah, no worries. That's fine. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you.